How not to record the purchase of a financed vehicle. Hey there, everyone. My name is Matt Holquist with the QuickBooks University. Before we get started on today's video, if this video is helpful, give it a like, subscribe. I sure would appreciate it. Also, head over to the QuickBooks University. Sign up for the masterclass. I have put a link down in the description of the video as well as the pinned comment. Sign up for the masterclass. Uh, you definitely won't be disappointed. Okay. I put this together this video of how not to record the purchase of a financed vehicle. This really applies to any financed fixed asset that you buy in your business. And, and the reason is because I see this time and time again with clients and with, you know, people that watch these videos, as well as members of the QuickBooks University. And it just, you know, it messes up the books and you want to make sure that you get this right. Now, the hard thing to think about when you're buying a vehicle or other you know, piece of machinery, fixed asset, whatever the case it is, when you have a loan on it, is you're only thinking about the money going out the door. And so, but we have to account for the loan that is also on that vehicle. And so what happens is people don't get the full purchase price of the vehicle or the fixed asset on the books, and they don't get the loan on the books. So here's typically what happens. You go and you purchase a new truck or whatever it is, a new vehicle in the business, a fleet vehicle, it doesn't matter what it is, but you, you purchase this vehicle and let's say that it's, you know, a $50,000 vehicle and you're only putting $5,000 down. Well, what, what people do is they go and they say banking, write checks, and they make the check out to the vehicle dealership. So, you know, whatever, put in a name of a dealership. We'll pick one here and assume that Bruce's office machines, we're going to buy a vehicle from there. And we're going to put $5,000 down and we're going to just go down here. We're going to put in the account. They will do, people will, generally will do one of two things. This is not what you want to do is they will go and they will record. Let's see if we go up to fixed assets, they may put it to vehicles or they may go down to expense and say automobile expense. $5,000. Now, here's what happens when you do this. One, it's overstating your expenses because you are putting a down payment as an automobile expense. Or if you do put it to vehicle up here, if you put it to the vehicle fixed asset account, if you really bought that vehicle for $50,000, you're only recording $5,000. So you're not putting the full purchase price of the vehicle on the books. And then you're also, when you pay the monthly loan, you have nowhere to put it because you have nowhere to put those principal payments against the loan with, that you got to finance the vehicle. So this is not how you want to do this. All right. So I'm going to show you two ways that you can do this the right way. So let me clear this out. Okay. So again, this example, we're going to assume we are buying a $50,000 vehicle and we are putting $5,000 down. All right. First way to do that is go up to banking and go to write checks. Assuming that you are writing a check or you took, you know, I don't know, cash out, you got a cashier's check, whatever it is, you're basically using cash to go put this down payment down. Okay, so first we're gonna make it out to the company. So again, we'll just say Bruce's office machines. Now, $5,000, you put $5,000 into the check. All right, because that is the net check amount. Next, what you're going to do is you're going to choose the fixed asset account vehicles, $50,000. You want to type in $50,000 right here. Okay. This is going to put the full value. Now you might be saying, okay, well that doesn't match the $5,000. I can't save this. Correct. So the next thing you want to do in the line below this is you want to choose the loan that it is. So let's, let's say this is a dump truck and we have a loan dump truck. So we're gonna choose loan dump truck. It will automatically fill in negative $45,000. Now I know this looks strange because it's a negative and a positive, but trust me, this will record the vehicle, the dump truck at $50,000 cost, the loan for $45,000, and then the 5,000 coming out of the checking account. Okay, so if we save and close, and I take you over to, let me pull up a report we're going to pull up the balance sheet standard. Make sure this is as of December 15th. Okay, so if we go down here and we look, we say, okay, vehicles right here. Let's double click this. We're gonna see 
$50,000 vehicle. Okay, so that took the balance from 78 up to 128,000. All right, so let me go back to the balance sheet here. If we go down here, we will see a loan for $45,000. There it is. So by showing the check and the net check amount, recording the full amount of the purchase price of the vehicle at $50,000, and the loan as a negative amount so that the difference equals the check amount of $5,000, that is going to be the simplest way to record a financed asset in your, in your books, a fixed asset. Okay, now let me show you one other way. This gets a little more advanced, but this gets into journal entries. Not a lot of people are comfortable with journal entries, but this is another way that you can do this. All right, so you're going to go to the company drop-down menu. You're going to go to make general journal entries, and we'll say the date's 12-15-2023. You can put in your entry number. Okay, so the first thing is we're going to say checking, and you want to credit this for $5,000. All right, this journal entry is doing the exact same thing that we just did with that right checks. Okay, so a credit to a checking account reduces it. All right, then we want to go down here and we want to say vehicles. Okay, vehicles is going to be $50,000. And then we want to say loan. And let me pull up my dump truck. Uh, I think we have it right here. And 45000 So a credit balance increases a liability. A debit balance increases an asset. And then the credit balance reduces the checking account. So doing it this way does it the exact same way as that check that we wrote just a second ago. So if I hit save and close, I'm going to go back to my balance sheet. We're going to see now we have uh, vehicles. Let's see, $50,000. We should have, there it is right there. So 50,000 was the journal entry, and you're gonna see the difference here. It says check here because we wrote a check, and then it's gonna say general journal because we did a journal entry. Let me go back to the balance sheet. We're gonna see the balance now of the loan dump truck $90,000 because we had two, one check and one journal entry for $45,000. Okay, so both ways will get you to the exact same spot. The check, writing that check is usually, not always, but usually easier for people to understand and grasp and do on their own. The important thing to remember here is you don't want to just record the $5,000 down payment. Don't just record that because it will mess up your books. You're going to be missing a loan. You're going to be missing an asset. And, you know, you're not going to be able to read your financial statements correctly. Any comments, any questions, please feel free to list those below in the comments. Also, as I said before, head to the QuickBooks University. Would love to have you as a member.